Okay, in this video we're going to learn how to make a graph in Excel for this experiment here. The graph will be a straight line graph. The graph will not just be of the range and the compressions um, from the experiment. The graph always is dealing with the equation that gets given to you. The equation in this experiment that gets given to you is a range. There's a constant here with k and mass and gravity. And then there's this x squared. Now we've used this x squared our Excel spreadsheet, we've used that x squared to work out the squared of each of the compressions of the springs from the experiment. So in a previous video this was all explained, but basically you could have skipped all of that. You could have done all of this by hand, typed it in, and now we're ready for a graph. So one thing you should know about Excel, which is very important, is whatever is in the left hand column always ends up on the horizontal axis what's ever in the right hand column always ends up on the vertical axis. Now there are ways of changing this but that's the default system in Excel so you should probably just run with the default. So if you're typing your numbers in remember the left column horizontal the right column vertical. So here we go how to turn this into a graph. We select the numbers you want not the titles just the numbers. You go up to the top and you click on the insert tab, you scroll across, and you find the scatter graph. Now, if you click on that, you get choices. You want the top one with all the dots and no lines. I know it sounds strange, even though we want a line on our graph, but you just want the one right here with all the dots and no lines. So you click on that, and boom, there's your graph. Personally, I would expand it to take as much room on your screen as humanly possible, because we've got a few changes to make. The numbers on the bottom look a little crazy, there's hardly any lines on the graph, but we do have dots at least. First thing I always do is I get rid of this. You right click, delete. You don't need that little thing. Now, you get a little lost about what you want to do to turn this into a graph that you want. So, what I've done is I've made a checklist. Here's my checklist. First thing we've already done in the previous video, or maybe you've done that by hand, where you've linearized your data. We just made our graph. But after we make our graph, we've got to do all of these things. We've got to turn on some grid lines. We've got to label the axis and make a title. You've got to turn on your line of best fit with equation. Then you've got to replace some variables to the aims variables. And finally, you get to print your graph and use it to write your conclusion. So first things first, to turn on the grid lines. Going back to our graph, here's our graph. We have some horizontal grid lines, but that's about it. How we turn on grid lines, whoops, let's try that again. How we turn on grid lines is we go to the layout button and you go to the grid lines button. And if you go to the horizontal grid lines, you can actually just turn on by clicking on minor grid lines. Now we have a lot more. We do the same thing for the vertical grid lines. Click on minor grid lines and we have heaps of grid lines. Looks a lot better. Okay, back to that checklist. Now we're gonna label some axes and make a title. Okay, now, sadly, before I'm going to do that, I'm going to actually take some of these decimal places off of these bottom numbers because there's way too much detail down there. I don't need one, two, three, four. I don't need six decimal places on this. So if you click once and then right-click, you can format the axes. And in doing that, what you can do is you can select the number, and instead of six decimal places, in this case, four will be just fine. So we close that. That's a little bit easier to read down there at the bottom. Now, the side, you could trim down to one decimal place if you want, or you could just leave it. Again, if you want to trim it down to one decimal place, just to change the numbers, you right-click once you selected the axis, you format the axis, you check on number, instead of two, maybe one, and you close. So it's there. It's the same numbers. It's just looking a little bit easier to read. That's all it is. All right, so... <laughs> Sort of got lost there, that was extra. Back to our checklist, ah yes, to label the axis and make a title. Here we go. If you have your graph selected on the layout button, you will have axis titles. So, you click on your axis titles and you give your horizontal axis a title, like that. You can type in this large box up here. Now remember that was the left hand column of numbers. So, that was the compression of the spring squared, because that's what the formula told us to do. The symbol for that is x, with a little arrow above the 6, do, um, 
and the units for that are in meters squared. The original units were in meters, but we squared everything. So you hit enter, and there's your label down there underneath your graph. It's that easy. The vertical axis, you can give a title the same way. So to title the vertical axis, choose a rotated title, and there it is sideways right there. You click in the big white box in Excel, and remember this is the right hand column of data, the column B. So that was the average range of your projectile. The symbol was that was big R from the equation. The units for that were in meters. You hit enter, and there it is. Now to give it a title, right next to axis titles is chart title. Chart title is really what I would call graph title. We put it above the chart, and there it is there. You can type in. Now usually in physics, what we do is we name our graphs with the vertical axis versus the horizontal axis. That translates to average range of projectile, you can abbreviate, versus compression of spring squared. Enter. Now it's a little bit large. I personally would put the cursor right after the verses. Hit enter, and it turns into that. If you spell things wrong, you can always go in there and change it. That's what I always have to do, usually. I'm going to drag this off to the side. So, here's our graph so far. Now, we've got axes, titles, we've got dots, we've got lots of grid lines. So, back to our checklist. We've got to turn on our equation. One of the benefits of doing your graph in Excel, instead of doing your graph by hand, which you can always try, is you can do this. After all this, that's not really that much interesting, but you can click once on your dots. You can right click on your dots and you can add a trend line. And if you add a trend line, make sure you choose linear. Because everything you graph in level 2 for this internal is going to be a linear graph after you've changed your variables. Remember, we squared the compression. So, and again, it's going to be a linear graph. On the bottom of this, there's a display equation on chart. You want that. You close this, and there's our line of best fit. Excel does it for us. And over here is our equation of our line of best fit. People who do the graphs by hand have to work out the equation all by themselves, but Excel can do it for you. And what you can do is you can highlight the things in here, go to the Home button, and increase the font size so it's a little bit easier to see that graph. Note that's font 18. And you can drag it around. So we have the equation of our line. You don't need to worry about calculating the rise of a row. It draws a line for you, it gives the equation. So back to our checklist. A very important thing for students, if you do a graph by hand or if you do the graph in Excel, is you have to replace the variables in your equation with the aims variables. Now what that means is if we go back to this, here's our aim. We have the range, which is big R, and we have compression, which happens to be little x. Back to our graph. On the side of our graph is range, so we actually need to replace that y. Just click, delete it, put an r. On the bottom of our graph is x squared, so it's not x, it's x squared. And most students sometimes forget this, and sadly, because of this, some students fail their internal. So you need to actually say that that was x squared, and remember how we signified that. You can put it in brackets if you really want. How we signify that is a little arrow and a 2. So we have our equation of our line. Again, you can close this. I don't know why that popped up. So you pull that to the side, and here's our graph with our equation. And finally, on our checklist, is to print this and use this information to write a conclusion. So in Excel, if you have your graph selected and you go to the home the file button, scroll down to print. Here's what it's going to look up. There's our printout. Now one thing you should know, currently this is the landscape orientation. Some computers default to the portrait. That's a small graph. You're actually going to want a landscape kind of graph. And with this graph, what you're going to do in the final steps of this experiment to pass is actually to write a conclusion. All of this will not actually get you the four credits. You need to write a conclusion about how the range and the compression of the spring are related to each other. You can
can also use this 1760 in this equation that was supplied to us that we used this equation to square the x's it told us to that was our massive hint in our instructions but in this equation there is that fraction of k over mass gravity m5 and down here we have all of these values so we could get what this fraction should equal and we could then compare it to this 1760 that would be a merit level kind of thing in the experiment so you probably want to look at other files but there you go that is how to make a graph in excel you can always do these things by hand but there should be a computer there for you and then you can do it this way it speeds everything up changes a lot of things